He's like, oh, he's like, man. My life here is 30 and 26 seconds.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to The Greatest Show on Earth. My name is Chris, a.k.a. Mr. Cross Science. This is the AC show, the coolest show on YouTube. And this lovely young gentleman to my left, or your right, is... Ooh, yeah. Aaron, a.k.a. The Handy there Outdoor Nerd. Your audio is a little bit delayed, Aaron, but no problem. That is all right. It's uh, storming like crazy here. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, nature's fireworks. Nature's fireworks. Sweet. All right. Well, <coughs> uh, for those of you who are new to the show, my name is Chris. And uh, this little show, the AC show, we live stream every Friday night at about this time. It is, I think, 8 o'clock Pacific time. Is that what time it is? Yep. I live in Arizona where we don't have daylight savings time, so it makes it hard for me to know what time it is everywhere else in the world. But you know what? I still will take not having to change my clocks <laughs> twice a year. So um, the AC show, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a show where we – try to showcase some of the things that we do, some projects that we do. Um, we also like to talk to other makers. We invite other makers to be on the show and we do our best to um, highlight really cool things that are being done in the maker community. And right now, everyone knows we need a little more positivity in our lives. So uh, we have a really fun show planned for today. Uh, we've got a couple of things, especially for new makers who are new to 3D printing um because we've got a couple of tips and tricks on how to customize things to make them your own even if you don't have fancy editing software or whatever um we're gonna have some really really fun projects uh that hopefully you guys will be able to work on if you're watching us live thank you for being here if you are watching us after the fact a replay on youtube we greatly appreciate you watching the show also if you don't mind leaving a comment a like uh, those are always appreciated. YouTube's algorithm doesn't tend to recommend my videos because I'm a really small channel. So anything that you can do to generate more activity on the channel is greatly appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so Aaron, how are you doing? Well, I have been literally burned one, two, three, four, five, six times today. Yeah, I tell you, it's, seven, it's seven, not easy. Seven, what seven, are seven. you? What are you doing? <laughs> Apparently, um, hurting myself. Hurting yourself. Um, is so, this, uh, you know, cooking class gone wrong, or what is this? Let's see. Uh, I don't know if you can really see. I can't the, uh, see it. We got a right there. I've got a blister. That was from. This printer here, I was feeding the uh, filament back through because it had been clogged up. And uh, so I heated it up trying to see if it would feed through. And it did. And it dripped on my arm. Oh, man. Yeah. Never good. Never good. That's the first time that's happened and hopefully the last time because good Lord. <laughs> um, I had to go burn some boxes and the, uh, the end for the lighter, I went to to go put it in my pocket and well you can see that burn there <laughs> you need um, to be a little more careful there Aaron. yeah the storm was coming in so the wind was blowing everything around and so the flames burned my uh hair on my arm right <laughs> so so that's that's my uh my day of being burned so kids, if you're watching now, you know, the, the moral of the story is be careful around fire and otherwise hot things. Yes. If it's hot, don't touch it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so <coughs> how's your day been going? You know, my day's been all right. It's, it's, it's a little bit tough, man. My, my wife has a job where she goes to work every day and I'm kind of stuck at home and I, uh, I'm really getting to enjoy spending time with my kids, but I'm learning that I'm just having a rough time taking care of all of my kids all the same time. It sure is nice. I don't know how my wife does it. She's an amazing woman, and I'm so glad that I married her. I don't know how she does it, but 
she absolutely is much better at taking care of all the kids than I am. But I will say, they all got dressed today, they've all been fed, and I tried to get them to bed all before we started the stream. So, overall, I mean, I did okay. There you go. It's not too shabby. So, <clears throat> just trying to uh, trying to tweet this out real quick. Yep, I uh, I just got it put out, and well, not truly tweeted out. I commented in what I had posted earlier, and tagged a couple of different people, and then put the link into the video. So. Um, sorry. Man, I don't know how to use my phone, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you tagged a couple of people, you said? Yep. Sweet. Okay. So, uh, Aaron, I just would really like to congratulate you on once again uh having so many more subscribers than i do because man it's it's been quite the battle uh it's been quite the battle between us for the last <laughs> for the last few months you know i've been <laughs> just one subscriber ahead of you and i i knew you were going to overtake me pretty quick and you indeed have you're up at 275 from what i see right here yep and, last uh, and I'm down at 267. So you've got me by eight subscribers. So we'll have huh? to uh, get that figured out. <laughs> I can't get that complain. figured out. I can't I need complain to, about that. If I posted more regular content, then maybe we'd have a closer race. But <laughs> you're definitely <laughs> crushing me right now. Um, right. So uh, anyways, today I... I have not been using my 3D printers. I've been I've been working really hard, uh, trying to get myself ready for when school starts back up again. Yep. And then the governor of Arizona just released something saying that we're going to be pushing back opening up schools for two weeks, um, which I'm not sure what that means about me receiving a paycheck because if I'm not at work, if they're, I don't know if they're going to make us work anyways, but we're just not going to be teaching classes. Or if I'm just going to not be in a check for, for an extra two weeks, uh, so I have to figure that out. Um, but yeah. I've been working really hard on that, and I haven't been using my 3D printers. But I had an idea that maybe we could talk to people a little bit about how to customize STLs in a really simple way, uh, because I think a lot of people don't know um, that there are actually some really easy ways to customize your own STLs. <laughs> Um, yes. And I came up with two different uh, little projects that you could do on your own. Let me just get logged on super fast here. If I can, if I can. So I was having trouble with my Fusion 360 account. I'm not yes. sure. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with it. Um, but I have Fusion 360 on my my main PC at home. I have yep. Fusion 360 on my old laptop, and I have Fusion 360 on my work computer, and they're all logged into my my name. And I'm wondering if it's because I have three different um, computers that have it installed that are registered to my name or something. But I was not able to fit Fusion 360 on my brand new laptop. Uh, which seems to be a theme. It seems like every time I try to put something on my brand new laptop, I cannot get it to load. So um, I was thinking about this the other day, and I said, but you know what? I can always use Tinkercad. And for those of you who've never used Tinkercad before, Tinkercad is, in my opinion, this is my opinion. I know that there are thousands of people that would definitely argue with me, including people we've had on the show before. But in my opinion, Tinkercad is a very oversimplified <coughs> Uh, way of doing three-dimensional design. Um, I know a lot of people that have used Tinkercad. I know a lot of people who have used Tinkercad to create some really incredible 3D models, 
I am just not one of those people. But if you know anything about my history, um, me trying to design anything is really uh, not the greatest. So um, what I'd like to do is I would like to show you guys the full process of using Tinkercad because this is one thing that I know that Tinkercad is, in my opinion, way better at than Fusion 360, and that is modifying STL files. Um, so yeah. let me share my screen with you and see. Right. While you are starting to do that, I wanted to do a shout out to our very good friend who has turned 53 today. Ooh. He is 53 percent complete our good friend bb3d aka brian vines so are you saying that somebody who lives to be 100 years old is 100 percent complete and they just can't do anything else ever because i seriously watched this video the other day where they had people who are over the age of 100 only who ran 100 meter dash i'm just saying 100 no, no. Hold on, I'm just saying he'll be, he'll be a finished print, and now he can go about his life. Oh, so he's not. As, as he, a, as a after he turns, object. so what I'm saying is once he becomes 100 years old, he has a, uh, he's got a free pass on having to actually do stuff. He can be, he can be lazy once he turns 100. Yep. And nobody's going to fault him for it. Yep. I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay. So uh, let me just try something here and see if this works. It sure does. So I'm going to go into Thingiverse because a lot of people use Thingiverse to find STL files. And I just want to find something on Thingiverse.com. So uh, they have these impossible the tensegrity tables. Have you seen those? The ones that yes, uh, yes. they use I've tension. Seen, I've, I've seen those everywhere. Did you see Evan and Caitlin's video where they made the tensegrity table to um, as like a side table? Have you seen that one? I don't know that I have. I've oh my just... goodness! I saw it today. It was the most amazing thing. They used it. They used <coughs> fishing line. They used fishing line, and they made this big, like a two foot by two foot table. <coughs> nice. Um, that's one of these tensegrity tables and they used fishing line and it's pretty strong. I mean, it can hold something like 30 pounds or something like that on top of it. And it doesn't twist or bow or anything. It holds pretty straight. So really, really cool. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click on this tensegrity table. Uh, it's by Oak 600 for anybody who is interested. All right. And I'm just going to download, uh, let's see, I'm going to download just the bottom. I'm going to download just the bottom. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to try and customize this. I want to write something on the bottom of the table. So this would be like on the, on the top edge of it, I want to have something inscribed on it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download that. And then I'm going to go back into Tinkercad. So in Tinkercad, I'm going to say create new design. Hopefully my uh, internet holds out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just import a file. And I'm going to go to my downloads. And there's the table hanger. And when I click open, this is the most amazing thing. Okay. I click import. And it's going to automatically bring that STL file into uh -huh. Tinkercad and it automatically fixes any issues with it and makes it just super clean, ready to go. And now I can take this and I can customize it with whatever I want to. So if I put a work plane on it, then I can work, work hold on, let me get this to, I can just take some text and I can put it on there and I'm gonna say, I want it to say, Drag in. Come on. Work with me here, computer. Mr. Carol Science. So I wanted to say Mr. Carol Science. There it goes. Um, and I'm going to rotate it around. Hey, well, but you're not asleep on your computer keyboard. Well, but what's going on, my man? 
Hope you are being well today. So then I take Mr. Carol Science, put it on there, and now I can create a hole if I want to. Um, and I can then take this and I can embed it or even punch it all the way through. Now this is super awesome. I group everything together. And now what I've done is let me get back to my original work surface. Now what I've done is, even though it's backwards right here, when it flips over, it's going to be right set up and it's going to say Mr. Carroll Science right across that <coughs> integrity table. And that's, I mean, that's a process that, you know, took less than five minutes. I was able to customize my own STL file. Um, definitely, definitely, if you're going to do something like this, um, make sure that you attribute the file to the original creator. Like I said, it was Oak 600 that created this in November of 2019. So that was actually quite a while ago, which is interesting because they've become so popular uh, right now. So yeah, so Tinkercad is something that's really, really simple to use, really, really easy. I love it. I teach it to my students. Um, I like designing with Fusion 360 more than I like designing with Tinkercad uh, because mm -hmm. to me it's a little it's a little easier to use. Uh, this Tinkercad, I mean, this is just my own ignorance, guys. Like I'm not a professional designer by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but the reason why I like Tinkercad so much, uh, to, why I like Fusion 360 better is because to me I feel like Tinkercad Unlimited to the regular shapes and polygons that they give you. Um, and I have a hard time trying to create my own custom design. <laughs> they have this little scribble tool, which is cool because you can actually draw your own shapes. Yeah. Um, but the problem that I have with that is uh, I'm not very artistic. And so me drawing my own shapes comes out uglier than if I just made it with regular polygons. Well, we've got a couple more visitors. Thomas, hello there. How's everybody doing? We got, we got Michael. Right. So, we got Michael, Thomas, Wellbot. We got um, probably a bot of some sort. <laughs> yeah, I um, I took care of that. All right. I'm not thinking it's Wellbot that's the bot. Uh, if you guys nope. don't pay attention to the chat. <laughs> But uh, yes, Wellbot is not the bot. Thank you guys for joining. Appreciate you guys. Oh yeah. Wellbot, I'm doing great. I hope you're doing great as well. Uh, I'm, having a I'm, wonderful day. I'm I'm doing okay. Um, I've not burned myself in um, two hours. <laughs> if you if you would have watched the beginning, I um got molten plastic on my arm. Um, got a burn here. Fingers got burned, hand got burned, my hair got burned from um, burning some stuff. The uh, the wind kicked up and blew the uh, the fire my way as I was putting a box into a burn. And so so yeah, this entire arm has been <laughs> roasted about six or seven times today. <laughs> yeah, he's uh. Think... <laughs> my wife, my wife's like. Are you trying to end your life today or something? Because uh, I can't trust you around our son if you can't keep yourself from getting hurt. <laughs> you need to have a barbecue or something, Aaron. Get that smell uh, of burnt meat. Uh, I'm doing that tomorrow. Doing that tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It's 4th of July tomorrow. It is. That's so, going to be exciting. I don't have any 4th of July plans. My wife's working. So it's just going to be me at home with the kids. Maybe I'll do a little bonfire in my little fire pit outside, roast some marshmallows. There you go. Yeah, it always works. I um... Thomas, haven't you heard that's the new tattoo? You just uh, you you three D print directly onto your arm, and uh, just that's that's a fast way of doing whatever you want to customize it you know yeah and uh, the fun part was I uh, so it's the the my mbot printer I call it mbot it's what I got from uh, man my, my brain is dead uh, Eddie Moser 
And uh, so I was trying to feed the uh, clog through that was done and it's and it wasn't really clogged apparently and uh so that's when it got onto my arm and i had it set to uh 255 c so uh yeah it's stuck and i couldn't get it off i went to grab it with these fingers and uh yep fun times for me today Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to get that one up and going again so I can actually print. <laughs> Thomas says, I'll stick to my old school tattoos. But Thomas, you could customize, customize it. Or ha have you seen all the, Aaron, have you seen the football players that are doing the, the burn scars instead of tattoos? Like the branding? Oh, that's just stupid. Have you seen that? That's like that's like the new thing is you instead of <laughs> instead of doing a tattoo, you, you actually burn like a scar into your arm. That's become that's a really popular stupid. thing. Stupid. That's stupid. You know what? I can give you one for free. Let me go grab the uh, cattle brand. <laughs> you uh, morons. Good lord. That's just that's stupid. <laughs> oh, I just, so I did want to show one more trick on how to create a customized STL. So uh, there are lots of websites that will do this for you, but they can be a little bit tricky. And I know that when you're using websites that will <coughs> change file formats for you, it can be a little bit scary because a lot of times if you click on the wrong link, you can end up getting viruses on your computer and it is actually a really terrible thing. I know this because my wife likes to click on virus links all the time. And I'm constantly debugging my computer. Uh, no, I don't think you can hear me. Love you, hon. Uh, so, <laughs> what I <laughs> so one thing that I've learned is there's a really really simple way that you can create something called a um, a lithophane. So so a lithophane is basically a 3D printed or wood engraved photograph. I've created a whole bunch of them. Uh, in the past, I'm sure that Aaron is about to show one off right now. Yep. We talked about these a little bit during our uh, September 11th stream. Um, and, and like I said, there are lots of websites that will do this for you. Really, really simple project uh, for you to upload a file, a photograph of some sort, and they'll uh, create an STL for you. <coughs> yep. Yeah, I actually have Malwarebytes, Wellbot. I use mal Malwarebytes, um, and I actually, I do have Adblock software on my computer. I know that it's not good, but I also pay for YouTube Premium, so I feel like it's, I still support the, the, the people's videos that I watch, even though I don't see ads. Um, but for some reason, my wife, my wife goes to Walgreens, and all of a sudden, next thing I know, you know there's like the, it's always the, PDF viewer, download free PDF viewer or whatever. And it's like the button that looks like you're supposed to click on it and then you end up with viruses. Um, but anyways, you take, you take uh, any photograph and you can literally just upload any photograph to Cura mm -hmm. and it will automatically um, turn it into a lithophane for you. So I've got yes. something on here's my thumbnail that i made for my son's model uh so this tells you how thick you want it i like to go with um like a four to five millimeter um thick depending on the project that i'm doing and you can change all of these different things um darker is higher means that the the thicker something is, the darker it's going to be. So, anyways, uh, and you can you can smooth it out a little bit if you want to, or make it more crisp, whatever. So, uh, you you click on OK, and it automatically imports that photograph into Cura. And so, it's hard to see because of the um, different things going on here, the textures. But I wonder if I can preview this. Oh, I got to slice it first. Sorry, sorry. 
See if I preview this, maybe it'll change some of the contours and we'll be able to see some of the lines there. <clears throat> slicing, slicing. Yeah, uh, so our uh, our good friend Joe Larson, aka the 3D printing professor, also did a um, a video on doing that. Yeah, so it makes it actually harder to see. <laughs> uh, but essentially, what you do, you can kind of see. Essentially, what it's going to do is it's going to convert that photograph into a liquid thing. Now, a lot of people will tell you uh, that it's better to print them straight up and down, like this, which I've heard that it's better as well. However, I will say that because uh, I don't have a Core XY printer, Core XY printers, basically the, uh, the, the build surface just moves down and that's the only movement that it makes. My printers, I have the X and Y move this way, or sorry, the X moves side to side, and the y-axis moves forward and back. And so because of that, you end up with a lot of travel with this really thin, narrow piece attached to the bed. Um, and so I sacrifice a slight amount of photographic quality to be able to lay the photo flat on the bed. And then I don't have to worry so much about it falling over and getting knocked over. Um, so it's actually really, really nice. Um, and, and honestly, for Christmas, I made a lamp that had four different photographs uh, built into it and I printed all of them laying flat like this and they all came out with good enough quality that you could 100% tell who it was. It wasn't, you know, perfect you know, 4K, oh. but uh, yeah, Thomas is sending out some love for the Core XY stuff and I I agree that Core XYs are nice, except <coughs> I, I do have access to two Core XY printers <laughs> um, and they are not my favorite. Not that Core XY system is bad, but that these two printers are not super great. Uh, I don't really want to go into too many details other than the fact that my school spent way too much money on way too crappy printers. <laughs> uh, but I don't want to. I don't want to be slandering any names out there. But they oh, definitely I will, need. Some I will. I will. I will say it. No, I, I will care. say it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyways, I thought you guys might enjoy a really, really simple way to make some custom STLs. It makes them really, really simple, easy to print, um, and you can make some really cool things out of it. I mean, this this photograph here uh, prints in – did I change something about it? Oh, I rotated it. Yes. This, this thing here will print in a few hours. And, well, this is at 0.24 layer height. Let me change that. Uh, I probably would point do a 0.12 layer height on this um, just to give it a little bit better definition. And let me see what it would slice at now. Yeah, uh, so the uh, the printers are the ones that starts with an R. <laughs> Which, you know, they can be, they could be good printers. They, um, they lack the support that they actually need. So Wellbot is saying that if I align it, I'll wait for it to finish slicing so I can see what the print speed would be. My computer's really struggling. So almost five hours to print this at, at a high quality thing, which isn't too bad. My my thoughts on a lot of things are <coughs> simply that um, your print time, it, for me, if you're going to print something, it's probably going to take, I would I would say, at least four hours for anything that's substantial. So, yeah. so Wellbot's saying that if you align it to the movement of your bed, which is this way, right? Yep, on the, well, yeah, on the Y. On along, the y. along the Y axis, uh, then it should be better. Now, I, I'm y, assuming that this y is... Y goes forward and back. Right. Because if you had it going along the X axis, you, it would do this and you could get that wobble more so but right because you're but you're only going you know what maybe five six millimeters thick at max um so it's not as bad because i've i've printed several lithothanes of course 
this one, which is a, a huge lithothane. Mm -hmm. I printed this one on my uh, Kitty Tech, which is only 150 millimeters. That's, that's bigger than 150. Do you know how I did that, Chris? You know, I do not know because I'm looking at it wondering, I mean, did he, did he, you definitely didn't put any seams in it because I don't see any seams. Nope, it's, that's one whole piece. What I did was I rotated it so it was going corner to corner. Oh, I see. So I can I get see. bigger than 150 millimeters if I go corner to corner on things. You can get 150 times the square root of two. Yep. Which is, <laughs> I mean, I should just know that. <laughs> I should oh, just know that. Where's my tape measure or something? Ruler. Let's see. I can actually tell you how big this is. 150 times. Oh, man. I need a calculator. Hold up. Excuse me. 150 times. Oh, actually, here's what I'll do. I'll do. Oh, boy. Well, and there see, we go. works good on that one because that's that's the uh, card. 212. That's a, yeah. So that's a, that's a core XY. Uh, that's a core XY. And then over here is my other core XY. Right. So three. I need for nah, this one. <laughs> it, in case you guys are curious, how come, how come Aaron and I are always going like this? It's because StreamYard doesn't mirror the screen for us. So most places that most places that you're streaming from, it'll mirror the screen. So when you look at the mirror, you know, if I hold up my left hand appears on my left side, even though in a mirror that would technically be your right hand, right? It's so, my left hand and it's on my right side. Right, so everything's backwards, it feels like. <laughs> and it's not a mirror, it's a true camera, so. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I need to replace the thermocoupler in it. And they don't just sell the thermocoupler, it's the thermocoupler and the hot end all together and that's like 25, well, with shipping, like $30. Aren't you going to replace the hot end with something different, though, anyways? Uh, I've got the hot end to, that I wanted to replace, which is an all-metal setup. But I still have to buy the entire thing to get the thermocoupler from Kitty Tech. You can't use a different thermocoupler? I've thought about that, actually. I was thinking about that earlier today on if I could just get a thermocoupler. I can't use a thermistor. I have to get a thermocoupler. Oh, it's a thermocoupler. It's not a, it's not a thermistor. Yeah, I've got plenty of thermistors and they don't work. I've tried. Really? Yeah. It sucks. I know. That's lame. <clears throat> Super lame. But yeah. Um, and then actually up here I've got a print R bot and then over this way you barely see a bit of the black. And I've got my ANET setting up there, which is going to be modified into a core XY. So. Look, oh, there I am. On my back, can you see me in the comments? <laughs> yeah. Let me know. yeah, you were just like. Yeah, oh man, that scared me for a second. Uh, okay, <laughs> so anyways, those are some little tips, uh, especially for those of you who are just barely getting started, some fun ways that you can Customize 3D prints at home. Again, if you use somebody else's work, make sure that you attribute that work to them uh, because they did a lot of work to make it very easy for you to take that design. Uh, that is the beauty of open source is that you get the opportunity to take advantage of somebody else's hard work. And yep. as long as you attribute their work to them, they don't care, which is awesome. Josh just popped in the chat. How are we doing today, Josh? What's up, Great Josh? to see you. I was just talking about you, Josh. I mean, yeah, all good things. All no, good things. He's lying. He is lying. He is lying. <laughs> all bad things, Josh. All bad.
Josh, we were talking about how you somehow have an affinity for Tinkercad and how you can make some really awesome, elaborate things uh, when all of my stuff looks like crap or very basic. And I have, uh, I, I have literally seen someone's work on making an Alakazam in Tinkercad. Josh Alakazam. did that? No, somebody. I don't know who, but somebody. Oh, somebody. And I was just like, um, yeah, for real. I, I don't know how. I don't know how people do such complex designs in Tinkercad, or if they. I don't know if they stack individual polygons to get that to happen, or what. I mean, it's it's a bunch of different shapes and all that. But someone to do an Alakazam that looked like that was nuts. It's amazing. Some of the stuff that that Josh has done on Tinkercad is absolutely incredible. We're gonna yeah. have to get him back on the show sometime soon. He's gonna have to do a little section called, you know, Tinkercad tips and tricks and show us how to do some really cool stuff. Because mm -hmm. Josh is one of those people who's just naturally good at like probably everything, I imagine. I imagine probably everything. So <laughs> sure. Well, we've had Josh on a couple of times too, so that's always we fun. Have. Sean. Yeah. Thomas, we need to have you on. Oh, yes. Yeah. Tom, Thomas mentioned that he got he got that order picked up by DHL, so he, he can start working on the Mer project, which I'm super excited about. <laughs> it should be super awesome. Yes, and we need to have Wellbot back on at some point in time. Yeah, so, for reals. But, uh, yeah. We, Wellbot says yes. Crash Rocks. <laughs> Crash Rock. What about you're saying that Crash Rocks uses Tinkercad? Yes, that's what he's saying. Nice. Yeah, I, I for sure would like to see some some stuff like that because I think that Tinkercad could be a really powerful tool. The only real, the only like super downside that I've seen, I mean, other than the fact, like, I for me, I'm like everything just looks so basic and blocky. There's no way that this works really well. Um, but but I know that I've seen other people do stuff like you're saying, making this Alakazam. Um, but the, the real downside that I've seen is there comes a point where you run into, there are too many polygons to be able to open and work on that thing in Tinkercad. And so that's, that's kind of the, the one real downside. However, you can see that. the stuff that I design isn't always, uh, I don't think really have, I have to worry too much about that because it's. <laughs> It's real blocky and basic anyways, so. Thick thon. Thick thon, exactly, exactly. Oh. That's always fun though. But no, yeah, you know, I mean, definitely some people are a lot better at certain ones. Ah, there we go, thick thon. There it is, so for anybody who, who has never seen this before, uh, this was my attempt at making a maker coin for Aaron. And uh, I know that this looks a lot like Mr. T. You know, a bigger fool that doesn't use 3D printing for their needs. Um, but this is actually my rendition of Aaron's face. So, you know, just so you guys know, this is this is Aaron. This is this is not Mr. T. Yeah, although it's a very good my, like this. My last name literally. Yeah. Yeah, so um, <laughs> that's uh, that's the handy outburner. This is what we call thick thon T H I C C. If you guys want to hashtag that, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> hashtag thick thon is where it's at. So, uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> what about you, Aaron? What uh, what have you been working on? <laughs> Um, besides well, burning I, yourself. <clears throat> well, that was just today, so we can't say I was working on it. Just oh, okay. um, uh, I've actually I printed uh, several uh, ear savers for people. Yeah, it's getting a little and crazy. I actually, right now. And I was offered money for it, and I said um, no. Oh, let's see a second. Uh, I'm 
Josh wants to know if you feel insulted. <laughs> take some. No. <laughs> Too much hesitation there, and nobody's going to believe you. <laughs> oh, trying to get Fusion 360 to pull back up. Um, <coughs> uh, so, doing that. I've got a bunch of stuff going on. Um, I was actually hitting up Joe Larson the other day, asking him some questions. Oh, yeah. Joe, by the way, guys, if you guys don't know, um, so every Monday, Joe does a, a live stream that's called Makers in Minecraft, where he um, gets people and puts them into Minecraft and allows them to to build their own little piece of society. And this last Monday, I was actually on Makers in Minecraft uh, on 3D Printing Professor's channel. So uh, if you guys get the opportunity to check that out, I am gonna be doing a, a virtual maker fair with uh, with Joe on on his channel. And uh, I'm building a, a, a Minecraft version of Bowser's Castle as my little um, piece of the maker fair. So if you guys get a chance to check that out, uh, it'd be really cool. <coughs> All right, Thomas, go get some sleep. We'll catch you on the flippity flip. Catch you on the flippity flip. <laughs> we'll see uh, you later, Thomas. Thanks for joining me. Oh, yeah. <coughs> uh, let's see. I'm, so I'm working on... Uh, getting this guy up and going again, which is actually some of the stuff I'm trying to work on at the moment too, <coughs> which is also why I need Fusion 364. Um, I've got a project coming up. Um, I don't know if you saw what I posted on Facebook the other day. I am trying to stay away from social media a lot. That's fine. I'll, um, um, so I'm going to be uh, changing this because I got it for a specific reason. But uh, this was the uh, this was the post. Was that a police car power wheels? It's pretty. I gotta say, you're pretty pixelated right now. Well, uh, yeah, it's a police car power with my son in it. Um, but uh, if if this gives you an inclination of what I'm going to do to the uh, power wheels. You're going to turn it into a Ghostbusters mobile? I'm going to turn it into an Ecto-1. So <clears throat> that is my plan on that. And I, uh, I actually discovered <laughs> you don't want to be on rage media. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I've, I've, I've been trying to, I've been trying to stay, I've been trying to stay off social media. I just because my own personal beliefs I know are, are conflicting with some of my really good friends that I know on, on Twitter and on Facebook and on YouTube and stuff. And so I've been really trying to stay out of it, keep my mouth shut because I, I care more. I care more for, you know, my, my friends, my relationships than being able to voice my opinion. I think that it's just better for everybody if I just kind of keep my mouth shut on a lot of things. So I've just been trying to stay away from it, stay positive <laughs> and just hang out at home. Well, I 100% understand that. Um, and that. But, so yeah, that's one, thing, else to show off to you. that's one thing I'm going to be uh, working on. Uh, and actually, one of the funny things is uh, the Mbot, there is these pieces that I actually replaced, uh, that I 3D printed and replaced. And I did it with my... Um, TV tech when that was up and running, <coughs> but I was trying to replace the um, the hot end, which the 
PTFE tube that goes into the hot end. It kept clogging up and I had replaced it. It was printing good again and then it messed up again. So I completely changed it out for a, um, an all metal hot end. And that's when uh, that happened. Right. So. Uh, so one more thing that I wanted to show off a little bit, because this is something that I have actually been working on. I just haven't printed it because I need to get my, my I'm doing a bunch of construction projects in my house. And so I'm trying to get, you are still shiny, Chris. I don't know what that means, but thanks. I'm going to take it as a compliment, Josh. Uh, so let me let me show you guys one more thing that I that I've been working on. So my brother came into town and he's got a little teeny tiny silverware drawer, uh, and that little tiny silverware drawer, he has to put all of his forks and knives and spoons and stuff in. But it's only like it's only like seven inches wide or something like that. It's really narrow. And so any of those little silverware organizers doesn't really fit inside of the drawer. And it, so it's, it's really, really narrow, but it's kind of long at the same time. Uh, so what I did is, hold on a second, wake up here. There we go. Yeah. So what I did is I, I separated into two different parts. So here's the first part that'll fit on my printer. And then um, the second part will print separately, and then they'll be able to glue together and make a little silverware tray. So again, my my 3D modeling skills are not the best, not the highest of quality, but um, I think for this project, they'll do. And here is the uh, the maker coin that I made for uh, Chris. Finally got it to pull up. Uh, Fusion was being super slow. But we all know Fusion is uh, web-based, so. Right. Yeah, so here's the really so, awesome coin that Aaron made for me. <laughs> and, you know, he ended up with big fun. It's got a <laughs> MCS for Mr. Carroll Science. It's got beakers on it. And then you flip it over, it says Mr. Carroll Science on the underside. Yeah, the, uh, the the MCS is actually because you guys will know this, but in my younger days, I was part of the K-pop band, and uh, we were called MCS. <laughs> I'm, just no, I'm just messing. So no. we act, and we actually uh, did these on a stream too. We had what, 15, I, 15 minutes. We did them in. Yeah, we. I think we gave each other fifteen minutes to try and make a <laughs> make a coin, and I think that I went over because I was trying to get real artistic with it, and. Uh, Went a little bit so Josh is saying, uh, am I adding a tongue and groove on the tray? Are you talking about where the two parts interface with each other, Josh? Because uh, I, I, I may do that, um, but the walls are pretty thin. And so I'm not sure if I'm going to have room to be able to do something like that and print it at any type of quality. But I think, I think it's got plenty of surfaces that it will be able to attach to. And... Um, yeah, I should, you should be able to attach with some super glue and just be fine, I think. I mean, there's to hope. Knock on wood. Yeah, for real. Like, there we go. Your sound of like particle board. That's that because count? it probably is. <laughs> there. There you go. That's better. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of what I've got going on is a bunch of stuff. And so if I can get this guy going, <coughs> I can print, um, <coughs> you know, as Eddie Moser says, I've got the COVID because I'm coughing. The um, so if I get this guy going, I can actually print some stuff. I'm going to try and Put the actual roof on it, make a roof for it. It's like put the uh, top stuff on it. And also, here's here's something I've got coming up. I <coughs> gonna work on designing uh, replacement parts for this piece. 
you can't tell what it is. <coughs> uh, I figured this much. Other, other people doesn't... might be able to see. My screen's kind of pixelated, so. Yeah, it probably doesn't help. I've got storms going on here and everything, but uh, so it's a piece one of my friends sent me uh, where he works. This is actually what hangs up the uh, for their phone calls. And to to do that, this piece actually constantly breaks. To get this replaced, they actually have to send the entire unit in for repairs and it costs some uh, 350 bucks a pop just to get this fixed to send the entire unit in to fix this tell, tell i'll print it for a hundred <laughs> uh, i said i could do it for 150. <laughs> Jeez, that's like 20 cents in plastic if you use the and good stuff molded too and the problem i have with injection molding is They've got weak points, major weak points in them. Um, well, so does 3D printing. But well, no, I know. But the hollowed out parts. Oh, right. right. That was going to be my question is, is there is there something that you could do to strengthen it up? Maybe, maybe redesign pieces that are breaking with the, like I like to use fillets on 90 degree angles because it strengthens that corner, you know? Yeah. Well, then, like, right, well, I don't know how well you can see, but uh, there's this little line right here yeah. for strength. But this little piece here, it's got a small little triangle. I mean, I can't can't really see it because it's not focusing, but it's got a small little triangle there for support. You know, so you got, yeah, that you got, your, got your wall, and then you got your little little triangle that's like this compared to the wall. You know, right. just like, and I'm just like, oh, man, I can totally fix that part. Uh, so I know how I'm going to kind of get this set so I can model it and stuff. But so Are it's going to be, it's going to be some interesting um, modeling to do for it because there's right up here it actually goes straight over. So there's straight here, and then it goes angled. So you've got this and this from from here, and then all of a sudden you have a instant. So so that's going to be a, a fun thing to do. And uh, well, my Mac is down because the hard drive fried, and my laptop is super slow. <laughs> so I, I mean, I was waiting five minutes for. Fusion 360 to uh, to load, so I can actually show the my the maker coin I made you. That is that is what you get for owning a Mac, you know. Well, nothing nothing but trouble. Hey, you but, know this, you know the the story behind the Apple logo. Uh, I once did. So the Apple logo, how it's got the bike <laughs> taken out of it, right? Yep. It's actually, it's, it's an homage to Alan Turing, who arguably created the first computer uh, that was used to help decipher codes from the Enigma machine in World War I. So, what, what, uh, so Alan Turing created this computer to help, to help decipher these codes. And then later on in, in his life, uh, he had a lot of like PTSD and he ended up committing suicide by dipping an apple into cyanide. He was he was obsessed with the the story of um, oh what's it Snow White. He was like obsessed with the story of Snow White, and so he actually dipped an apple in cyanide and took a bite out of it. And so the apple logo is an homage to Alan Turing. Yeah. Yep. That sounds about right. No, that's. Uh... Nuts is what that is. It's just kind of crazy. A little bit, a little bit yeah. But just uh, well, yeah, that's uh kind of the, the story, so. <laughs> so that's kind of what I've got going on is a bunch of uh things, but I've actually got a uh replacement drive coming in for it. So I will um 
be replacing it and I actually got the, the tools with the drive and everything it needs for it because it's got to have a um, uh, a sensor, a heat sensor on the uh, drive itself. So I had to get a special little thing to go on it. So, right. <clears throat> but hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll uh, have that up and going and be back at it because my my wife also needs this in case you know she has to work from home again yeah i'm actually a little bit concerned about myself having to work from home again i'm not sure how it's going to happen so i mean same thing same thing is happening as as happened during spring break is they postponed schools coming back for two weeks and when i did that for spring break we ended up basically not going back for the entire fourth quarter so yeah so now i understand it's uh it is nuts on on all that so yeah well we're gonna we're gonna see how that goes i'm just, i'm just hoping that i still have a job you know what i mean oh 100 percent understand that because i mean that's that's one thing that i never thought i'd have to worry about but now they're now they're looking at you know, keeping schools closed for a while. So Josh is saying California is not likely going back. And, and do you do you mean they're not they're gonna, you know, skip the first quarter of school, or or you mean they're not going back on time like you thought? Um, uh, it says online only. Online only. That's, I mean, at least it's online. Right. That's, I'm, I mean, I shouldn't fear for my job the way that I do, but it stresses me out to, to think that we could be going to a society where I'm just not necessary anymore. Yeah. No, completely understand that. It, um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, scary for just, well, everything. Yeah. We live in a really scary world right now, and definitely, definitely, twenty twenty is one of those places that time travelers are like, don't, just don't go there. Just, don't, like, just <laughs> skip that year, you know. <laughs> yeah. You now, at least we got Joe Exotic to get us through, though, you know. <laughs> oh man, so yeah, definitely. Um... Josh, I totally get you, man. Because, because uh, I'm I'm right there with you. You know, my my job right now is I work in an area that is kind of a, an extracurricular. It's kind of like a special class. It's not one of those core classes, and so it's a little bit stressful. Yeah, I totally with you. Well, Aaron, do you have anything else you want to show off real quick? Because we're at that hour mark. And I know you gotta get to bed, and I gotta go double check, make sure my kids are in bed. Um, actually, one thing that I have found that I really have been enjoying that I got from the dollar store. Give me one second, so I can actually uh reach it. Well, when I say dollar store, I mean Dollar General. Dollar General. You know, I live in a small town. Not Dollar Tree. Isopropyl alcohol is that fifty percent? Fifty percent in a spray in bottle. In a spray bottle, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty neat. So to clean my um, print beds, I just ch -ch 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 and wipe it down with a microfiber cloth, and it saves me a boatload of isopropyl alcohol and time that I'm not worrying about dumping too much onto the uh, print bed. So $2. $2. 
Two dollars. Yeah, well bought says nothing wrong with the one dollar the dollar store. I found I found isopropyl alcohol at the Dollar Tree for a dollar, but it wasn't a sweet, fancy spray bottle. But they do sell spray bottles at the dollar store, so I could then pour it into the spray bottle and I'd get yes. two dollars. <laughs> True. But uh I mean it's Well Boss says he always waters down his IPA anyways. <laughs> so it's it's not bad at all. I uh have been enjoying it. So it, it definitely makes it a lot easier to to clean it instead of yeah, just built out for sure. Yeah, I imagine I make so, it really easy. Because my my Mbot and my Ana are glass beds. The uh, the Ana cubic glass bed. <coughs> and then just any other regular bed, just trying to make sure it's clean enough, even though I've just printed I, I like to make sure it gets a that nice clean uh fresh coat on there so I don't have to worry about a failed print. Right. So so yeah, there you there you go. There's a uh, handy little tip. Just get a spray bottle. Two dollars. Yeah, that's really cool. So I've well, I, I've definitely enjoyed it. I, uh, I think that's about it for the stream for tonight, guys. I just want to say thank you so much it, for everybody who was able to join us on the stream tonight. Uh, whether you are here live, uh, which, of course, thank you so much. Make sure that you guys drop a like down below. Check and make sure you're subscribed with the bell if you uh, want to make sure you always get notifications for us. And make sure you're following us on Twitter. I'm at Mr. Cross Science. He is at underscore underscore T-H-O-N. Uh, fun, and then uh, you don't have to worry about missing any of our future streams. Next week, we will be on Aaron's channel, so make sure you look forward to that. That's going to be a uh, it's going to be a blast. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're watching us after the fact, also thank you so much for staying until the very end. Uh, we appreciate you guys in all shapes and forms. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, next week's episode will be episode fifty. Oh, I, oh, dude, I totally put episode 39 for today. It must be episode 49. So. I can change it. I, I thought it was 39. I, te I think I texted you what it was. Is it 39? Uh, it may be 39. I don't know. We'll double we will double check, guys. <laughs> Maybe 40. It may be 40. I think it's 40. 50 is coming up. Four, I think it's four. We got to get Brian on episode fifty-three. <laughs> that was my thought too. Um, yeah. Uh, so so yeah, I think it's forty. Yes. Uh, my brain's been fried today. So, so it is forty. Yeah, forty. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So join us next week on this guy's channel for episode forty. Thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate everything, all the support you guys do for us. Uh, sending all of our love. Sending lots of positive vibes. If you guys need anything at all. Hit us up. I don't really follow too much social media right this moment, but if you send me a direct message for anything, I will respond to you as quickly as I possibly can uh, because I'm here for you guys. I care for you guys, and I appreciate all you've done for us and made this a really fun stream that we do once a week. So thank you guys so much for watching. It's uh, coming up on a year. It's getting there. Yep. Well, Bob, I thought we were going to get you on for 69. Yeah, that's, that's the plan. That's the plan. When he, yeah, when you Brian in chat for the dad jokes, I mean, well, well, we just need to make sure 69 is on your channel uh, because. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not exactly trying to get monetized, but I'm not exactly trying to get a bunch of YouTube strikes either. So. <laughs> Wait, uh, I understand. All right. Later, Josh. Have a good night. We'll All right. catch you on a flippity flip. Good night, guys. And we will see you next week. All right. <laughs> Well, boss is also important. <laughs>